It's 2024 <laughs> and they've gone and done it again. We're back with another attempt from the United States government to tell everyone how video games are causing violence in the world, creating oh, extremists, yes. and most importantly, how they plan to stop it all. Oh, this time, wow. the leading cause of extremism is apparently content creators, live streamers, and of course, the returning classic, Me? memes. I'm part of the problem. <gasps> Chat, no. This time, the leading cause of extremism is apparently content creators, live streamers, and of course, the returning no. classic, memes. I read this 45 page document that was created by a branch of the US government. So come with me on this magical, mystical, and often confusing carpet ride to discover how you, once again, are the problem. No! First things first, who exactly wrote this report and what's the overall goal? It was created by an organization called GAO, also known as the US Government Accountability Office. Okay. This office is funded by and directly reports to the US Congress, All with right. the lead position being called the Comptroller General, a position that is assigned by the US President. The GAO exists in their own words to help the government save money and work more efficiently. They basically get paid taxpayers' money to try and hold the US How government accountable lead into video in games, their spending though? and to try and find problems that need to be solved. This time, the problem they found that needs solving is gaming and social of media. Course. I'll read you in their own words why exactly this report was initially created. In recent years, content on social media and gaming platforms that promotes domestic violent extremism has influenced several high-profile attacks according to experts what? and agency officials. What? As a result, some social media and gaming companies, as well as federal agencies, are making an effort to understand and address online content that promotes domestic violent extremism. Wait, are they actually saying video games cause violence? Are they actually saying this? Are we back in the 2016 era blaming games again? Yeah, it seems like it. What? America, please, we've been through this already. We've already been through this, America! Please! GAO was asked to review domestic violent extremists' use of social media and gaming platforms. No. Essentially, they're putting forth the idea, <laughs> directly, that gaming and social media has contributed to some heinous acts of violence. And I'm not even going to disagree with the premise I never that stopped. social media wow. is a place that people become radicalized or communicate extreme ideas. Nor am I even going to disagree that there are pockets of the internet that foster communities like this. Wow. What I'm going to disagree with is lumping gaming in there, as well as Actually. how they provide almost zero examples of what they <laughs> of claim course. exists. Of course, there's no examples. Report. Whether you disagree or agree, there needs to be substance to make the claim. But we'll get to that. That was almost 30 pages or whatnot, right? And no examples. Go figure. Go fucking figure. So let's go over some of the greatest hits of the report. On the very first page, they essentially present a pipeline of extremism that stems from live streamers. The pipeline, in their words, goes from a live stream to video hosting sites, then to social media platforms and forums, okay. eventually landing on user sharing. Okay. Now, obviously, they're not talking about your average Twitch streamer who plays Fall Guys or World of Warcraft. They're Yo, talking predominantly 12. about those fringe streamers that are deplatformed so from most of the mainstream websites. Wait, what? The types of people who are most likely deep down conspiracy rabbit holes and foster an Wait, audience what? that are probably on the way towards some pretty extreme beliefs. Like who? This is a very real thing that exists. My issue with the usage of this, of course, is that there's almost zero context about what or who they're talking about. Of course! They just throw this infographic For fuck's out sake. there. This of course becomes not. a much bigger issue when you start to introduce the gaming aspect, which they fault. essentially lump in with this entire report, using the very real social media bubbles of fringe content to smuggle in gaming as some kind of Trojan horse to Congress. This becomes apparent when you look at their inclusion of an ADL, Anti-Defamation League, article which represents gaming as a whole as some kind of breeding ground for, and I will quote them here, white supremacy. What? The ADL report I also read just to- Wait, 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 white supremacy? How do we get here? 
A 2022 report by Anti-Defamation League found that 20% of adult gamers and 15% of young gamers report being exposed to white supremacist ideologies in online games. Okay. Okay. Yo, end of days, what's up? Um... Which represents gaming as a whole as some kind of breeding ground for, and I will quote them here, white supremacy. The ADL report I also read, just to make sure I wasn't getting my wires crossed and I had all the information at hand. The GAO essentially used this ADL report to inform what they're talking about here. This I feel like, they, uh, let's go, let's go back a little bit. Like they said, like what, twenty percent of uh, young people are exposed to those ideologies in within games, which is, I I have no idea of the percentage would be true here, but with how woke a lot of games are going lately. I would think this isn't correct. <laughs> I would think this isn't correct with how woke games are recently, you know? Good now, I'm good evening. Hope you're having a nice Monday just full because of YouTube. Welcome! Thank you, thank you. Hope you're having a good day too. <laughs> they said slow is for everything, so it was inclusive toxicity. Mm. Oh, I people used to say the N-word a lot in COD lobbies. Ah, uh, maybe they're talking about the uh, communities then, in that case. But... <laughs> that is general toxicity, right? That's, like, not regarding white... Like, people aren't saying the N-word because they're being white supremacists. <laughs> they're just saying the N-word because they're fucking toxic. ...them here, white supremacy. The ADL report I also read, just to make sure I wasn't getting my wires crossed and I had all the information at hand, the GAO essentially used this ADL report to inform what they're talking about here. This is one of only like eight sources that they cite in this report to Congress. So the ADL article is important to the points that they're making. And the ADL essentially claims that, quote, more than four out of five adults, 86%, aged from 18 to 45, okay. experienced harassment in online multiplayer games. <laughs> Boo-hoo. Boo-hoo! Boo-hoo! <laughs> I just can't... <laughs> just have to think about the recent examples. <laughs> about... <laughs> uh, the two stupid fucking... <laughs> women that I literally uploaded a video about recently, right? Like, firstly, ex Jana, and before that, we talked about... I don't even remember her name. Like, where she said she... Uh, like, where a guy was, was quote-unquote threatening to grape her, right? So, yeah. Who the fuck has been harassed? Yeah, right? <laughs> Someone's arresting you in a game, mute them. It's not hard. It really isn't hard to mute people. Mute them, report them, move on. If you seriously get offended to the point where you need to leave the video game in an online space, then maybe, just maybe, competitive online gaming isn't for you. Just maybe it isn't. Maybe you should stick to single player games in that case. Or maybe you should just play with your friends. Like, can we stop making, or can we stop holding people accountable? Like a group of people accountable for the minority of You're people? You're the problem, Kitsu. My bad. Why are you tempting us? Sorry, my bad, my bad. We really need to stop like holding for example, like ex did, right? We need, really need to stop holding men accountable for toxicity in video games. They would need friends for that, that's true. That is true. One of the few things in the article that could explain them reaching these numbers of harassment is this infographic of data, where they ask 30... Like, I'm just gonna... I need to... need to come back to this, uh, to this. Like, I have... 
Hello, I'm a woman on the internet. Hi. <laughs> I've been harassed and insulted and whatnot in online lobbies. So often. And here I am, still not blaming the entirety of men for it. It's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. How do you do that? How did I do that? Honestly, women don't exist. <laughs> How the fuck do I not blame every man for this? Guys, chat, I blame you now. It's all your fault. It's all your fault now. In online multiplayer games. One of the few things in the article that could explain them reaching these numbers of harassment is this infographic of data where they asked 13 to 17 year olds if they experienced harassment and then broke it have. down by categories. The Plus categories include things like disrupted play, such as trolling or griefing, <laughs> which made up the largest chunk, and called offensive names. Thank you for the sub tea bag. What's up? Tea bag underscore JT <gasps> has you. subscribed to the channel. I appreciate you. Chatsu, welcome to the chaos. Tea bag underscore JT. Get ready for epic gaming antics, <laughs> tale collecting adventures, and yes, unforgettable Chetsu. moments in the digital realm. Yes, Chetsu. Let's make this journey legendary together. Legend? Wait for it. Dairy. Let's go back. Or griefing, which made up the largest chunk, and called offensive names, which came in closely behind. So what they're calling harassment is basically, if somebody says you're shit in the <laughs> video game, goes AFK in a ranked match, <laughs> she, or intentionally she, feeds, no. team blocks you in FPS, something wait, 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 like Let me, let me go ranked, back so you guys can see everything. Basically, if somebody says Leak you're spotted. shit in the video game, trash, 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 trash. <laughs> wait, so let's go. Okay. Jace is kind of a P. Unbanned Jace with Ignite. It's okay, man. Good fight. Better gank for Carly. S. Match or Literally, feeds, okay. Team blocks you in FPS, something like that. <laughs> something Tyler griefing one. or trolling you. They're basically using this to present an argument that gaming is full of these really bad people and it's extremely yeah. toxic and it's hateful. So toxic and needs to be seems banned. Pretty fucking out there is a concept to me personally. They then go on to use this data to claim that, and I'll need to quote you on this just to outline how stupid it is. As a result of being targeted by hate in online games. 30% of young players said they always hide their identity when playing online. Now, I've been playing video huh? games online since 1997. I've never once... Well, like... What do you mean hide their identity? Like, if we are talking about hide their identity, like, what are we talking about? Like, are we just talking about, in that case, their name? Are we talking about their... Um how modern people talk about like identity like regarding like their gender like what are you talking about <sighs> so stupid you hide personal information in online games yeah that's what i mean like what are we talking about so they don't say constantly, hello, I'm a male, female, my name is this and this. Like, literally, like, this is so... My brain can't, like, I can't with this shit. Like, what? I... I just don't understand. Now, I've been playing video games online since 1997. I've never once not hidden my identity in video games. I yeah. don't make my character name my actual full yeah, name. Yeah, who would do I don't that? Make my character look like me. I don't change my display picture to be a picture of me. Nobody does this. Actually, You'll like, what are you talking about? Identity just by virtue of existing in video games and always have done, we create usernames and gamer handles and tags. So this makes zero sense to me. They're yeah. trying to basically say that due to somebody trolling you in a ranked match or calling you shit at a video game, whatever it's going to be, which we all know people do, they all say outrageous things in games yep, to just try do. and offend you. Nothing about you personally, probably, because they don't even know who you are. The ADL is trying to make this link that due to that, and they've shown the data, the majority of it is coming from these two groups of what they call harassment, to say that this is making young people hide their identity. And if this is what you're putting <sighs> forward, I have to question your credibility or what Actually, your goal man. is. If you're dragging this into your report as if it made so any stupid. sense or contributed towards an actual point. Now, this is where it gets wild. They also polled kids 
mm-hmm. literal children, okay. ages between 10 and 17, okay. asking if they had been exposed to white supremacy. They but How would... How would a 12-year-old know what white supremacy is, man? How would a 10-year-old know what white supremacy is? I... I don't think the average 10-year-old knows what the fuck white supremacy is. Uh, what do you mean you ask them? Been specifically outlined to the children that by this they mean the exact concept of believing white people are superior to other races and white people should be in charge. That is a quote. Apparently 15% of kids said yes. Okay, okay, specifically we asked if they were exposed to people who believe that white people are superior to people of other races and that people should be in charge. Hi, welcome! What's up? Thanks for the follow. They have been a- is a quote. Apparently 15% of kids said yes, they have been exposed to this in multiplayer games. At which point I'd ask, what the fuck are kids playing nowadays for this to, to be the case? Legit? You don't have to wait long because the answer is apparently Roblox. Now I obviously- That's how things would come in. <laughs> Roblox. If you don't play Roblox, but in all Neither my time playing online games, I wouldn't say I've been exposed to white supremacy. I've been exposed to people saying words that they shouldn't be saying to try and offend people. I don't yeah. think I've been exposed to actual ideological white supremacy Same. like somebody speaking out a manifesto or something. Nope. Many times have changed, but anyway, <laughs> that's in there. The next section they called ally behaviors, which oh, I'm going to skip for everybody's sanity. The next part wait, 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 is really why? What's... ally behaviors. What does it mean? Demonstration of allyship among young people? Sure. Of young people ages 10 to 17 who reported the following behaviors after experience and harassment. Response every time. What the fuck is allyship? Chat, what is allyship? Virtue signaling stuff? Oh. This is about not treating it like a big deal. The if if hear someone be arrested, I speak up. It's when two shippers become allies. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, 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 where's Chrome? I'm a I'm a Google on Chrome. I'm gonna Google it on Chrome. Just seeing if you are behind the message or not. Agreeing with a certain point or message. Okay. But what even would be the point? Where's my mouse? I can chat. My mouse isn't showing up. Oh, there's my mouse. I was excited. <laughs> which I'm going to skip for everybody's sanity. The next uh, I mean, part I is guess really a interesting, actually, to prove a point that I'm trying to make. And this is where they give a statistical breakdown of which games these kids are reporting being harassed in. Valorant! And seen that they're using trolling and saying bad words as personal harassment in video games, you know exactly which games are going to be at the top of the tree. All the competitive team-based ones. Would you look at that? Valorant, Call of Duty, Dota 2, Fortnite, PUBG... Count Strike Global Offensive, and the list continues. So essentially, the ADL has built a statistical basis that claims harassment in online games is growing and causing people to do heinous acts in real life. Would you guys ever want me to? Uh, would you guys ever want to watch me play Valorant? Because I feel like um, watching a streamer play games like that, like online games, could be kind of boring because there's not going to be a lot of chat interaction at the same time. But I don't know really. Maybe like a one-off thing to show you guys how shit I am at the game. 
because kids log on to a competitive game, get told their shit, called some names that are probably based on shock value and nothing to do with them personally because they don't. <laughs> I love you, Thira. I love your mother too. Go to E and E Ash. What's that one? <laughs> so pure man reported you snitch. Wow. No, personally, who they are. Get trolled. Whoa. That's what this report is. And just for the record, three of the people that were experts that consulted on the GAO's actual congressional report work for the ADL, so were probably in some way involved in this report. This gets worse when they get to the section that they talk about adults and their experiences of harassment. The ADL claims that from their data, 17% of adult gamers experience doxing as in having 17%? their personal identifying information like full name and address posted online. And they also get this one, 12% of adult gamers in America experienced swatting. 12% of... One. 12% of adult gamers in America... 12% of adult gamers were swatted. Right. How many gamers are getting swatted in America? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, streamers are getting swatted, but gamers? Percentage. What the fuck? Need to be careful. Yeah. I mean, swatting isn't that big of a thing in Germany anyway, so... 12%? Right. Right. I mean, they literally said according to their data. <sighs> America experienced swatting, which right. the ADL define as having a stranger make a false report to emergency services to target somebody. So they claim out of 60 million American adults that play video games, 7.2 million of them are like, no way. With also 10 million of them experiencing doxing. Wait, which I'm just gonna maybe say, I'm going to look up another stat. I don't believe these numbers. I don't believe that too. How many people get spotted yearly in America? How about that? By 2019, there were an estimated 1,000 sporting incidents domestically each year. Okay. How do people get sported on stream? I don't want to know this. Oh my god. My PC is too slow. 1,000 in 2019 domestically. Like, I don't, I don't believe it's as low as 1,000 either. Like, I think it might have been... Bound to a region then? I don't think it's as low as a thousand. Oh, did I just disconnect my... Yeah, I did. But... So it should be pretty low in Europe in comparison. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. You never really hear about... But I don't believe that they're real. Wow, PC being hella slow. You never really hear about spotting in Europe to begin with. You never really hear about that. If they were swatted, it would have been in the news all the time. Legit, like, if gamers were getting swatted, we would have been hearing about that. Like, none of us have heard about this. This is ridiculous. Literally, they made it the fuck up. Also, 10 million of them experiencing doxing. Which There's I'm no way. Say, I, I don't believe these numbers. I don't yeah. believe that they're real. There's no way There's no I way. could conceive of this being true. Obviously, I know doxing and swatting do happen. Of but course. the random people in video game lobbies, a combined rate of 29% of 60 million people. There's not a chance that that can be the case. That would mean statistically, every game you join of, say, Valorant or CSGO, with 10 people in there, almost 3 out of the 10 have been doxed wow. or swatted before due to a video game match that they played. 
That number just feels absurdly high and reads like fiction created to support a narrative that this makes shit is gamers so crazy, appear by the way. to be considerably more dangerous. This shit is so crazy, by the way, that people actually think that it's okay to SWAT streamers. That that shit makes me so mad. And the fact that there's no repercussion for the people that do those false responses, uh, alerts or whatever, that do those fake call-ins, it's ridiculous to me. Like... There needs to be done something against it, otherwise people wouldn't do it, you know? ...than they are. Anyway, that ideal report is a video all on its own. I obviously have gone a little bit deeper into that because this is a large basis for the rest of the GAO report. I they think it doesn't do harm while some have died because of swatting. Yeah, a stream has literally died. People have literally died because of swatting. Innocent people have died because of swatties. It's ridiculous. People are idiots, Katie, so it doesn't surprise me. People are idiots, but it's still... It should be attempted murder. It should be. Yeah, exactly. It should be. Those people that do those false reports need to be held responsible. As it pertains to gaming specifically. I just wanted to give you a background on what this report was using when it was presenting this narrative to Congress. This is what they claim is a factual basis for their objective reporting. Now, not only do they use this ADL report as a source, they also use the Department of Homeland Security report called Homeland Threat Assessment 2024, the Federal Bureau of Investigation and Department of Homeland Security report called Intelligence Assessment and Data on Domestic Terrorism, a January 6th report on domestic terrorism, a PEW Research Center social media fact sheet, Entertainment Software Association's essential facts about US video game industry, and last but not least, the US Secret Service Mass Attacks in Public Spaces report. You can find all of those within the main GAO report, which I will link below. So it seems like most of the gaming inclusion here comes from that ADL report, and that specifically comes from a mass shooting event in Buffalo, which they linked to gaming because the shooter released a manifesto stating he was radicalized by a Roblox custom game, which we've seen before with people claiming after they've done something really bad, that a video game made them do it, which is obviously video nonsense. It. Yep. It's not engaging in reality. I don't know why we'd believe these people. There's obviously something wrong with them to do that in the first place. So to then say what they've written or said makes them a trustworthy narrator and we should take on surface level what they think did this to them is ridiculous as a concept. I'm gonna tell you in Minecraft. It's never the video game, it's always a mental health crisis and a failure of society to help that individual. The avenue or venue for the radicalization is hardly relevant, nor is it ever the actual video game. It's always people they meet who share similar ideas, which then makes it not about gaming at all and about the core issue of mental health and any tool to communicate or find peers. Which is why these reports always miss the mark for me as they focus entirely on things like gaming being an issue, ignoring the fact that gaming is not the problem and never has been. They totally miss the forest for the trees. You should be trying to solve people's mental health and what's yep. leading them to this path instead of skipping that step and just saying, let's try to monitor these places where people are meeting, which again, I think on the totem pole of how people do these things, gaming is probably very low. So let's go back to the GAO report. They then is a German, what do you think of having no guns? I think that's a good thing. Like, it's not that we're not allowed to not have guns. There are gun licenses here, from what I know. But it really... I, I don't know how strict uh, gun licenses are compared to the US here. To be honest, I have no idea. But... The fact that the average person doesn't own a gun, I think that's pretty good, because <laughs> you see what's happening in America. And yes, obviously it's not only the gun's fault, it's also the people's fault, but at one point you also gotta not give the human the option to have guns.
Americans don't understand that because I can have something doesn't mean you should have something. Yeah, exactly. Majority of people are too stupid to own it. Yeah, 100%. Maybe just shouldn't own guns. The average person does not need a gun. An outline, and I'll quote the section, ways that domestic violent extremists use online platforms. And then they show an infographic talking about memes. memes Essentially okay. saying, and again, memes. I don't necessarily entirely disagree. Memes. The people use memes to memes. spread a message to a large audience. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and Pepe being a hate um, hate crime symbol or something, right? Oh, oh no, Pepe oh, yeah. is so bad, guys. Oh no, it symbolizes so much bad things, guys. Oh my god, no, not the Pepe. And then a small portion of people that message reaches and resonates with move to a private communication group. Then, of that small communication group, an even smaller percentage of those people might wind up doing something radical. This is not untrue, this does happen. I know we've all seen some incredibly racist, sexist, or otherwise outrageous memes on social media. And of course, you're going to use anything that's popular as a way to convey an idea oh my God, how about positive tell? or negative. But I'm going to hazard a guess that most of the time people sharing those, even if they're bad, even if they're memes based on things most people consider bad, they aren't on a mission to recruit people to any kind of cause Actually, and are just then. sharing them because they find it's, them funny. Obviously, I don't agree that they're funny, but I don't think everybody who shares it's just something a fucking joke. You know, some kind of way is out there trying to recruit people. And we have examples of this, so that's why I don't rule it out as existing. We can just look at things like involuntary celibate or better known as incels. These people do mm. see and share these memes, then they end up in a community where they get further radicalized. The and then things happen. They have done, we've seen them. The next section discusses the mass shooting in Buffalo and wow. makes an absolutely wild leap of logic. They claim that due to the gunman putting a camera on his head and then carrying out the attack, that he was, quote, replicating the visual style of a first person shooter game, which is utter fucking nonsense that it's is, just a convenient place to put a camera that is which is why it's so used ridiculous in oh my god no, ain't no way they gave that as a reason ain't no way they literally gave that as a reason oh my god no ain't no way they that video was crazy though is that video where my memory is fucking bad right uh, was it that shooting where the guy said um, subscribe to PewDiePie at the end? Was it that one? Yep. Yeah, that, that shit was so fucking bad, man. He said it at the beginning? Okay, never mind. He said it at the beginning then. The New Zealand shooting. Or oh, oh, so I'm told. <laughs> oh my god, bro. The fact that he said subscribe to PewDiePie at the start, uh, that shit had me so mad. That shit had me so mad. And now they are saying that because he put the cam on his head, he made it a POV as in games? Like, uh, shut the fuck up. Oh my god. Like, ain't no way. The game, which is... Let's go back a bit and... Repeat. ...a camera on his head. A wild leap of logic. They claim that due to the gunman putting a camera on his head and then carrying out the attack, that he was, quote, replicating the visual right. style of a first-person right. shooter game, which is utter fucking nonsense. It's just a convenient place to put a camera, which is why it's used in pretty much every outdoor activity video ever. They just put a GoPro on their helmet. Yeah. There's zero link to the idea he was trying to replicate anything. And again, this Ridiculous. just discredits the report and exposes the clear agenda directly in the face of their stated mission of objective and neutral reporting. The GAO report goes on to make some incredibly silly assertions, such as this section that basically says, gamers make friends in games, and some of those gamers might be extremists. So okay. somehow making friends is... Uh, some of your neighbors might be extremists. Some of your co-workers might be extremists. What do you know? What, like, what do you fucking mean? Of course some gamers might be fucking extremists. Of course. Because uh, some humans are just fucking extremists. This doesn't make the game a, the bad person. It makes the human the bad person. Should have shoved the camera up his ass. Then it clearly would have been fine. <laughs> yeah, clearly. 
these leaps of logic. Actually, man, we can't let the games have the gamers have friends. Otherwise, we can't radicalize them ourselves. Yeah, that's why you have to surveil your neighbors. <laughs> such as this section that basically says gamers make friends in games and some of those gamers might be extremists Whoa. so somehow making <laughs> friends is bad or something I, I don't know exactly what the point is here to be honest they just say some extremists make friends in games and That's that crazy. could be a bad thing the funny section comes up next where they oh. basically contradict most of what they're oh, claiming with a single sentence that let's reads go. One expert noted, there is no evidence directly linking violence in video games to real-world violence. Wow! But they then go on to immediately hit you with the however, and then say that extremists will use certain games Another to target expert. people who play violent ones, and even make their own games to recruit people. What? Which, again, makes it not about the game, what? because there are no mainstream games. Wait, what? Another expert said violent extremists may selectively use video games with audiences they believe will be more receptive to violent extremist information. In addition, some violent extremists make and disseminate their own games that glorify or normalize past violent extremist incidents, such as recreations of prior mass shootings. However, two experts said these games are not frequently used as a recruiting tool because they do not appeal to a wider audience. And it is easier for violent extremists to connect with others on messaging platforms instead. Wow. Would you look at that? They, they have contradicted themselves in this paragraph so many times. What? Like, what? What even is the plot at this point? You mean that gangs will recruit some places filled with uh, people receptive to gang recruitment? What? That's insane! No way! The point is that every side buys experts. <laughs> the conclusion was that playing competitive video games increased aggression for a short time after the game was over. Mm. You expect these people to know what they're talking about. <laughs> which again makes it not about the game because there are no yeah. mainstream games created that have any kind of sizable audience you can point to that exists this makes me want to play to again, recruit man. people to extremism if these are the leaps of logic you're making you basically can replace the term video game here for written or spoken language and blame the ability to communicate instead of video games is there zero way to link any of these things together as a cause and the actual vehicle for recruitment is just the ability to communicate which you can do in pretty much every avenue that people use on a daily basis. Yeah. This is like blaming electronic mail for people being extremists because somebody can email somebody else. It's ridiculous. Like, yeah, as soon as you allow people to talk to each other, if they find somebody who's into the things that they're into and they're bad things, of course, they're probably going to get together and talk about the bad things. This is nothing to do with video <laughs> games. This next part's pretty crazy. Okay. According to some companies they spoke to, big okay. tech and social media in particular, okay. they assign human workers to specifically monitor people who they believe are, quote, bad actors. What? Not just on their platform either, meaning they employ people who follow them around digitally to other platforms and mediums. So, like, they literally hired stalkers? They literally hired online stalkers? Is that what they did? compiling reports and keeping tabs on them. That's the social media companies doing that, not the government. That information is then obviously going to be shared with federal government. This next part- I'm so confused about this right now. Like, what are they saying? tabs on them. Did like, uh... Not just on- Specifically monitor people- Like, why are they even bringing this up? Honestly, why am I questioning why they're bringing this up? They have brought bullshit up this entire time. Why am I even questioning this? Undercover FBI agents on chat, thank you for your service. Thank you. They People prefer the term private detective. Quote, bad actors, not just on their platform either, meaning they employ people who follow them around digitally to other platforms and mediums, compiling reports and keeping tabs on them. That's the social media companies doing that, okay. not the government. That okay. information is then obviously going to be shared with federal government. 
This next part was pretty funny, to be honest, until I thought about it more. The GAO report links certain profile pictures on social media to violent extremists. Okay. They state specifically like that many white supremacists use ancient Greek, Roman, and Norse imagery to, quote, create an aesthetic that supports their narrative. Now, this on surface level sounds ridiculous, right? Yeah. But I'm not going to lie to you guys. Almost every time I see someone saying some deeply racist or sexist shit on my Twitter timeline, they almost always have a picture of a Roman centurion or some old Greek statue. This was obviously funny to see in a government report because it sounds stupid, but at least anecdotally, this one tracks with what I've personally seen. I, 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 can, I can speak for this. I don't really get a lot of <laughs> extremists or racists on my Twitter timeline. I have a lot of anime and VTubers on my timeline. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I don't know about this one. I, I can neither confirm nor deny this one, Chief. That's crazy. It does sound crazy, but uh, he says he, he's seen this happen to you. It's kind of true. Holy shit. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> now, obviously, the issue lies in grouping people together as if they're all doing that if they have the same profile pictures. Because at the end of the segment, they specifically state one of the experts noted that this type of imagery may Another not expert. directly violate company content wow. policies, but it helps draw others into this worldview, which doesn't even mention the people using these pictures doing anything. It just draws a line under those profile pictures and says they're bad. One last thing I want to highlight, the report also states the federal government is collecting evidence on social media, which we already knew, but now you have it in black and white that if you post some memes that they consider to be an issue, you're probably now on a list. But unlike Santa Claus, where you have to do something really wrong, it could just be you posting a Pepe or something, which let me remind you, the ADL still considers a hate symbol. Have no fear though, because the federal <laughs> oh, agency is so responsible crazy. for collecting your memes and your social media. Pepe is a hate symbol. Yo, check, can we have, can we get some Pepe's in chat right now? Spam those Pepe's, we, ha we have 70 TV. spam those Pepe's, chat. <laughs> Whatever paper you want to spam, go on. <laughs> Your information does not join Discord servers, so gamers are mostly safe from this. They're not really allowed to go anywhere where they would be required to interact with you directly, <laughs> presumably due to interaction nice, or something the like based that. One. So Let's go. To public places. That being said, throughout these reports, there are also claims that Discord is a bad place and also somehow complicit in creating extremists and radicals, just like gaming apparently is. The reason the they come to this conclusion is solely because it can be used for bad people to communicate, which again, anything online can be used to communicate by bad people, but they obviously feel the need to point at gaming and Discord specifically. Yep. So to me, clearly this report was completely lacking in any form of evidence, factual or objective reporting, despite the claim that that's what the G- The only evidence they really gave, like, or rather the only example, the only example they gave was Roblox. That one time, that one time, they just gave Roblox as an example of something's happening. But even then, they didn't go into details of what happened there. AO exists to do. They use terrible reports from the ADL that make zero fucking sense, to be honest, to lump gaming into the equation when this report should have focused solely on social media, which they can probably make a much stronger case for. Obviously, you've got big people on these alternate social media platforms that do run live streams and, and post videos that have some pretty extreme beliefs, some nationalistic beliefs, things like that. So you're a big but you don't see that in gaming. Yep. It just seems like another time where gaming's getting blamed for something that it really has nothing to do Bye with, Sherlock. despite not a single study existing Bye that links violence to video games, even the most violent games in the first place. I do want to say that obviously there will be examples and cases of people finding each other in video games and then going on to a private server somewhere and eventually maybe doing something radical like the report claims. That's common sense. It Any can happen. It can happen can anywhere. With each other presents the opportunity for this to happen. And obviously the games that host user generated or created content such as, for instance, Roblox, are games that are more likely to have this occur. Games that host play generated content as well as games for children probably do. But, need uh, what, more what's the saying? Correlation doesn't cause causation or something? Correlation doesn't mean causation? Like, I think that's the one. My English. Like, don't mind my English, right? English isn't my main language. So I think that that's the one. 
strict monitoring and moderation for exactly those reasons. But to take the entire gaming industry and just throw that to the wolves over a concept that is so common sense and apparent with zero evidence of any of the claims outside of saying it can happen is wild for a government agency to be doing. They may as well say the internet, the postal service, the local town board, talking in the street, the telephone system or any form of communication is the issue. That would make just as much sense as saying specifically oh. gaming is the problem. What bothers me most is that these reports always present everything as bad. They state that gamers can become radicalized, but they don't mention that gaming can also bring people together, That's create true. friendships, help yeah. people who might be struggling with isolation yeah. or on the path to radicalization by bringing them into situations with other gamers who enrich their life and unknowingly bring them back from a dark path. They would rather pretend that gaming is somehow an issue or that any of these problems are inherent to the medium. Gaming can give people a place to belong, introduce them to kindness, companionship and understanding, but in their world, they only see the bad. And the scary part is that the report was accepted with the Department of Homeland Security the and the fuck? FBI agreeing to their recommendation, what? which is incredibly vague in the first place. But anyway, there we go. Another example of game is bad. There was over 250 pages bad. of documentation Game's here bad. between the sources. So if you want to go read, enjoy, it will all be linked in the GAO report, which you'll find down below. And remember, next time you post a meme, they're watching you. No! We're being watched! We're being watched, boys! No!